Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Hope you're all well on this Tuesday. Last day before I go back to work, which is never fun. My busiest day of the month, I think, without a doubt. It's always chaos. Uh, Jack decided to get up early this morning too, so that didn't help. <laughs> the little champaluno. But uh, nah, all good. All good. I, was, uh, I had a reasonable sleep last night. I crashed out early and uh, got a little bit more kip than I probably normally would have. i am uh, got my the next, this week's video already three quarters done, so I've just got to do some fine tuning on that. That's the behind the scenes of the current video, which is out, which is that double falls hike. So uh, as I said yesterday, get that done, do the behind the scenes, that one will be in, and then I can focus for the next week and a half on getting my road my road reel video done before the cutoff on October the 6th, I think it is, 6th or 7th. But if you haven't started that, you need to get uh, underway. It's not, that's not much time to get it finished. So yeah, looking forward to that. And I'm gonna really head down the bums up over that one for the next week and a half and smash it out as much as I can while I'm at work. Rightio, um, just a note, if you've been looking down below where I've got all like my affiliate links and stuff, you would have seen Dana, my Dana Boots link. That uh, link is over. Uh, someone did contact me, said they tried to get something and it had already expired. My apologies, I thought it was an ongoing one, uh, but it has expired. Uh, they still always have uh, really good sales on, like anywhere up to half price. So definitely go check their sales section on their web page uh, for Danners. If you're looking for a pair, um, I'm now I'm waiting for their thongs to go on sale for summer. So fingers crossed they're coming out of their summer. So I'm assuming they'll go up soon. But uh, if you're looking for a good pair of hiking boots, again, I can definitely recommend Danner. Go check them out. Uh, they do have a sales page if you don't have much funds at the moment, which is understandable. But uh, definitely go check them out. Big news for the channel, uh, I finally got the right bid through and found the right one. I've bought myself a little Mavic Mini. Yep, I've got another drone. <laughs> uh, hopefully he does better than Droney, our existing drone on the channel, which I had uh, I lost at the last Barra Classic into the river. Firstly, the trees, or into the bush, then into the tree, then into the river, uh, but We've gone a little bit more professional. I didn't really go full blown into the $2,000 bracket as yet. Uh, I'll see how a Mavic Mini goes, and then I'll, if I want to, if I'm really excited and I think I'm going to get some value out of it for the channel and it's definitely worthwhile, then I'll sell that again and then move my way up to it. I think I'm looking at the moment, probably the Autel 6, 6K is probably the best one, I think. It's got the best of both worlds. It's got the Really good photos, it's got the 6K, that big sensor, and it's also got the really good uh, follow me stuff, similar to the Skydio. Not as good as the Skydio, and probably not as good as the pictures as the DJI, but it's sort of the in between the DJI and a Skydio. It's got a three quarters of both. So yeah, I think that's the best value for money. So either that or a splash drone, that was the other option to look at the, some of the splash drones. If you haven't checked them out, they're pretty cool. They'll self-flip themselves out if they went to the, when they land in the water. You can take footage underwater. You can, if you're a fisherman, you can drop baits out in off the beach, out into the sea, drop it out. Uh, obviously, you need a few batteries if you're going to be doing that a lot. But uh, yeah, some there is some amazing options out there for drones. And then the other option is down the track is if I, this goes well, then I may look at uh, getting into the FPV stuff. That seems to be the big market that's selling and going ahead in leaps and bounds. There was one thing I was going to predict that's going to boom in the next couple of years. It's FPV drones. The normal drones, yeah, they work well for photography, but the rules and regulations uh, have really hampered them as always. As soon as the government gets involved, it gets ruined. <laughs> um, like most things, and as soon as you start having rules and regulations, all the fun goes out of it and it just becomes a big uh, paperwork mess, uh, which is much like work, <laughs> I guess, for everyone. But uh, FP3, because they're, FPV, because they're normally well under 250 grams uh, and you can, and you're seeing them through the goggles and you can fly, you can get some, A, you can get some just ridiculous footage, which is just insane. 
and it's a lot of fun and you can build them yourself and have that it's basically a, a full-time hobby with a lot of benefits and fun involved so very very cool so i think that's probably going to be where drones are going to head that fpv and i, I think we did say last week dji are in the midst of uh, rumors have it that the, they're going to be bringing out their own fpv kit so you can build your own drone up and using DJI parts, which is a great way for them uh, to sell a lot more parts. Uh, if you can make it a modular system where you can just people can just bolt stuff off, well, then they're forever going to be ordering stuff off your site and getting that cash flow constantly coming through for them. That's good for us as uh, amateurs and learning. It's a great way to get into the system and learn how to do it and what to do at a cheap cost without having much technical expertise, I guess. Um, it's not dangerous or anything. It's uh, it's, uh, it's less than twelve volts most time, so it's not going to be. It's not going to be. Ugh, oh, wow, uh, it's less than less voltage in the car, and that's not even going to hurt you. So that's fine. So it's uh, it's just a lot of fun, and just knowing where to put stuff and what to do will be cool. So that's probably a good little bit. So yeah. Um, other than that, uh, what else? Oh, big news! Uh, if you're a photographer of any sort, and you know Loom Cube. They do the fantastic lights. Um, I've got one of them that I use a lot for light painting, uh, for putting in the water and stuff to try and get some highlights and bits and pieces out of. Uh, super, super good quality. A uh, little bit, can be a little bit exy, um, but definitely value for money because they, they last, the battery lasts in them. They get a really good light. They are dimmable down to a really low level, which is good for light painting. Unlike some of the others, they stay a little bit bright. Uh, but very, very cool. Uh, obviously, I follow them on Instagram and catch a lot of things. There's a lot of great photographers out there and artists doing some amazing things with these lights and light painting and stuff with drones. You can get the little lights that go on your drone from Loom Cube as well, like your color lights and your normal lights for flying at night or at dusk. Uh, so they're very cool. So one of my photos from the Shooting Stars and Astro um, uh, video when I went out with Benny uh, they've used in their weekly competition I think there's like five or six photos up for voting so if you can hook me up uh, go and vote you want to vote for number or not number vote for the letter D that's my photo you see that beautiful old tree we had and then the Milky Way in the background um, big thanks for Loom Cube to for putting us up there that's much appreciated it's pretty cool to be sort of recognized I guess in any sort of form or fashion um, especially when it's your art and it's something you, your passion and something you enjoy for someone else to recognize it and to to show you off that's I guess for any artist that's the highest compliment so thank you to Loom Cube uh, and just keep up making great products so very cool so you can check that out on the Insta I've put on the page and also on the Facebook uh, you'll be able to see it as well I think there'll be a link there for you to go and check it out so yeah don't forget D vote D <laughs> Rightio, um, some big news, I'm gonna, heaps of news I want to get into. We'll go into the big one, which we talked about for a few days. Just a bit of Legion Energy, a bit hot. Summer is definitely on its way. Oh. Um, the Sony A7C is released out. Uh, that happened this morning at 9am for us here in Australia. Not sure what time it was wherever else, but um, depending on where your time zones were. Look, it's everything we thought it was. Uh, a few of the highlights I looked at from the video. 215 minutes record time from one battery. So that's pretty darn good. That's 120, 180. So it's well over three hours of one battery of video record time. Um, that's going to be interesting to see if that's accurate. That's pretty darn good if you can add a one battery. That's cool. They do have an upgraded battery does come with uh, options of S-Log 2 and 3, so that's really, really cool. That's good. The video is 4K, but it's 6K downsampled, so, or oversampled down to 4K. So that's pretty wild. That's just gonna give you a really, really good picture. Talked about a few times, I think, when you're uploading a video to YouTube, the little secret I got off, I think, Matty Hoppier, um, was to take your 1080 video and when you do your render, render it as a 4K video. It doesn't make it 4K, but it, it just gives it a little bit of a, 
a pump. So if you're coming from 6K down to 4K, that 4K is going to look crystal sharp. It's going to be a really high quality 4K. So that'll be very cool. 24 megapixels, as we talked about, that ISO 100 to 51,000, that's pretty cool. 15 stops of dynamic range, that's something that needs to be tested. Um, that's generally sometimes a little bit oversold, and it's probably not as good as it is, they say. Five axis stabilization, 10 frames a second with autofocus, 93% autofocus coverage, IAF, animal AF, so very similar to the rest of the Sony autofocus set up as the A7S III and the A7 III. Um, and yeah, and also as well as that, they released a brand new flash to suit, a HVL F28RM, which someone, no one really knew that was coming. Uh, basically bolts on, new high powered, but a compact flash. So that looked pretty darn cool and quite handy for use flash photographers. The lens, well, if you've seen the sort of early reports about this, we all know about the lens, the 28 to 60. Well, yeah, that's, I don't know, really know what they're thinking. Yes, it's compact. It's going to be a great, great take it on your, on your travel and go shoot your holiday, but no one's going to pay 2000 US dollars or 2100 US dollars uh, for a camera just as a compact travel camera. That's, unless they're a doctor or a lawyer, they're going to have a Leica anyway, which is exactly this similar sort of body style um the so the lens is really not going to be good they should have as i think same with their their proper vlogging camera that come out the little compact one the sv1 i think it was didn't have wide enough angles it's got to be at least 15 16 mil full frame equivalent to get there to a 20 is not a bad area anything over 20 is tricky I know with the Sigma, I, that works out to be around a 24, and at full stretch with the 24, and I've got a, I'm not a short ass, I'm six foot one, so I've got a reasonably decent length of arm. I can get it out there, but that's like, I have to hold it full, full length, and it just gets a tight shot. It's not, it's not really big enough, so I'm probably gonna start using this 10 to 18 a lot more for the video side. Um, and try and work it out that way because I can take that down to a 10 which gives me a 15 which is perfect so it gives me a lot more room to play around with so I know a few videos where I've cut my head and stuff like that which it's just pure the fact that when you're trying to vlog with a 24 mil it's just too far and the videos they had they had some lady and she's got a camera like with a bent arm here holding this and she's trying to tell me at 28 mils she would have been lucky to get a face in there probably would have just been her nose it just it was just yeah wasn't the truth um so yeah they should have definitely listened to people about that they listened to everyone about that with the a7s3 what they were thinking about with that lens i really don't know other than that the only other complaints um i watched jared poland's quick review on it uh talked about that eyepiece uh he's like myself he wears glasses he said it's painful with it because it's A, it's on the wrong side. He normally uses left eye. If you're right eye, it's not too bad. Um, but it's just because it's so tiny. It's I think they would have had a better option with just keeping that off and done like the Canon where you could put one in the hot shoe mount but put a full size one. So if you actually wanted that to take photos, well, you could have that in your bag and just shoot video for normal and if you wanted an eyepiece to shoot photos well then you could slot that in the hot shoe and go from there with a proper full size uh, EVF instead of putting the little poxy one there and I think that would have been a definitely a better option than putting that shoving that there on the side where it's a painful for probably not 50 percent but 30 to 40 percent those left eye users I guess there's a people enjoy either side it all depends and then the fact that it's just tiny, he said he could barely read the stuff in there. So, and there's a lot of us old blind bastards. So that doesn't make it easier. Um, and the only other issue I think anyone really had was the handle's not as big. And the size, it's a, they say it's a compact camera, but if you put it up against the A7 III, and Jared was kind enough to have both of them sitting there, it's really not that much smaller. Um, when they said compact, I thought it was gonna be a lot smaller so you could vis physically see the difference between them uh, but it was basically the only difference was the top your normal 
EVF, which is on the A7 III, you cut that off and basically you get exactly the same camera, but a smaller handle. So, And apparently there's not a, an available battery grip to go on the bottom of this either. That is, that's not going to be happening. So some aftermarket people are going to have to come up with that to do those little tricks. Overall, I think it did pretty well. Uh, it's going to have all the Sony same qualities. So portability wise, it's probably going to, it's only about 130 grams lighter than A7 III. So if you've got an A7 III, don't buy it. If you've got something similar to an A7 III already, uh, it's probably not for you. If you're looking to upgrade to a full frame camera with some great features and you want something compact or, or not a really massive camera, uh, this could be an option for you, but it's still 2100 US dollars. That's a lot of moolah. That's uh, that's three grand Australian, so that's that's a fair bit of cash. You can get a Z6, you can get a lot of other decent cameras for that. So definitely have a look at your options. It will be a good camera, but you may be able to snag a A7 III off the uh, eBay market and get it cheaper. So check out that. Rightio, uh, other big news, hot shit news straight off the press last night. Nvidia has brought ARM. Uh, so with no ARM with Apple with the new chips, that's the probably the biggest place you would have heard about them. With all the talk with the new laptops and iPads and mobile handsets all use that ARM technology. Well, it's been bought by Nvidia for 40 billion US dollars, massive amount of cash. Uh, it's going to be, and their reasoning was behind it was the fact a they're fantastic quality and they do great graphics cards and all stuff, but they've also got their leg in the bed of AI and having these ARM chips, they're the ones that pretty much run AI from a lot of the other companies. So it's going to give them the key to the door to get in that AI like uh, drones. We're talking about AR and augmented reality when you're doing uh, FPV drones. Basically, it's real life augmented reality you're seeing it from the camera you're not actually physically doing it you're watching you through a screen to watch where it is basically like ar or i guess you could comparison both of them so that ar is definitely the way of the future it's we're going to see a heck of a lot more stuff that'll be happening tomorrow with apple the whole show is going to be is based on that ar sort of philosophy so you'll we'll hear more about that with the arm so yeah massive news they said uh, the good news is they have a pretty broad range. They don't have too many arguments with people, so they're going to be still selling their technology to other people to use. So that's pretty cool. So big deal, done and dusted. We've been waiting to hear who was going to be the partner for ARM, and now we've got a winner. So th I think that should work out pretty well. Um, AMD teases the brand new 6000 series graphic card in Fortnite. Uh, if you go into creator mode, you can go to the Creator Islands, I think it was. The boys in Fortnite have got a picture of the brand new 6000 series card and basically the only difference between the old Radeon one and the new one is it's got triple fans now. So a lot beefed up, but uh, they had a Fortnite guy, fly, one of the great uh, game characters flying down and you could land on the graphics card. So that was pretty cool. Uh, October 28th, we'll get... That will be the release for that, and we'll get all the prices and specs. Nothing new on that. It was just basically a bit of publicity and a good bit of publicity because it was pretty much pumping out through Twitter and everywhere. Radio Insta360, if you've got an Insta360, big update on that. Uh, a lot of color grading stuff, uh, fine tuning, and a lot of stuff with editing and night stuff as well come out. Uh, today so don't forget to shoot off and get that but they did have one last week which is a lot towards night modes and there's a hell of a lot more stuff that they pumped out towards this so insta360 really really putting the pressure on your gopros and your dji's in the camera realm so definitely one to keep an eye on they're put if they keep bringing out these great features and stuff it's going to be hard not to think about them and what happens with the GoPro 9. So if the GoPro 9 needs to really come out and have something pack a punch. So I don't think 5K is gonna be enough to save it. There's gonna to have to be a lot more in regards to low light, I'm hoping. So fingers crossed on that one. But yeah, Insta360 just piling on and doing a great job. 
massive big phone leak uh, and a little bit something different over on Unbox Therapy. The boys at a at the at the premiere the preview, the first ones to get it, the LG Wing, uh, pretty wild bit of kit, a uh, phone that basically comes as a normal phone and you just flip it, it's spring loaded and the, sc and the top screen goes horizontal. So you get a screen like that and then you get a bottom screen. It looks like a giant big T for a tiger. Go tigers. Um, <laughs> and it actually had uh, looked pretty, A, looked pretty good and looked pretty well built and the quality was pretty, pretty nice from what uh, Lou was holding on and talking about. They tested the opening and closing this thing 200,000 times. So the spring on it and the mechanism and I guess the screen's not scratching and bumping is going to be pretty much flawless. Looks really, really good. 4,000 milliamp battery, 25 watt charger. Uh, and that's a quick charger. It'll give you 50% in 25 minutes, 100% in 85 minutes. USB-C, two colors, uh, Aurora Gray and an Illusion Sky Blue, pinkish, sort of that, sort of that color that changes color. Oh, that color that changes color, nice. Uh, that actually looked, looked really nice. Uh, rotates, uh, as I said, rotates up. You can then flip it so that the long horizontal screen can then become a keyboard or it can be watch, watch a video and you can check text down below or read emails. The functionality of it is pretty darn awesome of what you can and can't do. You can turn it that way and have that as your maps in your car and then that is your turn by turn or phone on the small section. I think it's a 6.8 6, 6 inch, 6 inch screen for the, the main screen and then a 3.9 inch basically square screen. So like an Insta, call it an Insta screen down the bottom with a normal phone screen as well. So very, very cool. Um, other things, camera wise it was pretty good. Uh, it's got a 12 megapixel large pixel ultra wide, which is fantastic for low light. Similar, I think, idea to the A7S III that with that big pixels sucking in the big light. Uh, it's got a selfie camera, 32 megapixels, so super good quality for your face shots. And it's also got a 64 megapixel high resolution camera. Now the selfie camera is one that pops up. So what that ability does is while you've got horizontal, you can film that way as well as film this way. So you've got your normal camera shooting out that way and then you've got your selfie cam shooting this way because it's popping out of your top of your screen. Very cool. Uh, and it also got a fun some funky little movie options because it's on this pivot and that pivots, I guess, spring loaded or whatever, it basically becomes a gimbal and you can control that gimbal with the bottom screen. So movie wise and vlogging wise, uh, some pretty trick things coming in regards to this. You'll be able to adjust it, turn it, pan it, tilt it, all those sort of funky things. It's uh, very, very cool. Um, other than that, Snapdragon 765G, it's 5G compatible and it's passed the military spec 810G test. So it's shock, uh, dust, uh, humidity, vibration, all that. There's like nine things that pass, pass military spec standard. So it's it's a pretty robust bit of kit. You'd think something that flips out, it's gonna break and snap and drop. Well, I don't think so. They've really spent a bit of time on this to make sure it's tickety-boo. Uh, it's definitely a good bit of kit. Eight gigabyte of RAM, 120 gigabyte storage with a micro SD expandable card slot. So very, very cool. I think that's about it. On that one, yep, yeah. So yeah, if definitely another great option for you, Android guys. And I, I think I said to uh, good mate Ed the other day, he's an Android user, and I said, mate, there's so many options for a new phone. You really are spoiled for choice at the moment. Oh, excuse me. It uh, it's amazing what is out there with the features. Um, Apple had really has a fair bit on its plate to a keep their customers. Um, and B, to, to try and steal people over from Android system is going to be very, very tricky, very hard to do because there's so many options. And I still can't get my photos from my phone to my frigging computer to save them. It is still a nightmare ever since Catalina came out. So Apple, 
Thanks for zero callbacks. Um, other than that, lucky last is the Canon PowerShot Zoom. You'd see it on the front. It looks like a golf range finder. It's basically a little video camera and camera. Um, it's coming out on Mukaki, the Japanese Kickstarter version type thing. Uh, this is from Canon Rumors. Looks wild. Watch the video. 12.1 megapixel. It's only a one third CMOS sensor. 10 frames a second. ISO 100 to 3200. It's a 100mm to 400mm normal zoom lens, so it's not the ideal for close-ups, but for normal, just out and about, this thing you can hang off your neck, that's how big it is, it's only about that big, so super tiny, super portable, 5.6 to 6.3, image stabilised, and it's got a digital zoom all the way out to 800, so for parents who want to film the kids at the soccer or sports or bird watching or anything like that and you're travelling, you don't want to put a big camera or even a compact camera, you can hang this around a lanyard and you're away. So it looked pretty cool. Um, optical stabilization, face autofocus, micro SD card, 144 grams, so mega, mega light. This, uh, looking around about the 300 US dollar mark if you convert it from the Japanese yen. So if you're really super keen, you could probably work out how to get that in, otherwise, Probably eBay, they'll pop up once they come out and release. So, and they're due late 2020, early 2021. So, definitely a little bit of funky stuff there from Canon. And I'm actually pretty excited. I think that actually would sell reasonably well in most markets as like a very super entry level. Something similar to the Sony little 3000 series, little 4K sucker. If they could make this a 4K version, I think they'd do pretty well. And maybe trim the zoom down a bit so it's a little bit usable more than a long distance stuff. And that's about it. I'm starting to sweat. Definitely summer here. Radio, I'm back at work tomorrow so it'll be uh, back to nighttime ones. So I'll see you then. I've got a bit to do because I'm gonna unpack all my cupboards, get all this gear set up, get dinner, get sorted after work, after a 16 hour day. And yeah, it's gonna be a long day. But I will see you then. Can't wait to see you all. Thanks for stopping by. And whether you're going that way, that way, I'll see you on Wednesday for the Apple event and all the aftermath. <laughs> Will there be an iPhone 12? Mm.